Like I just started. So you can go with Okay. Everybody okay, else. I'll start. Okay, I'll start recording. Start recording. See if this is better. Yes, you're on. We got you back. We're going to start okay. now. That's good. Okay. Um, so if I'm allowing so you to I just need to know because when Aldo's talking to you, he does not see himself in a square picture, but you see him in a square picture, correct? I did a moment ago. A moment ago, I saw Aldo. So simple. Now I see Anna. Yes, but oh, she's talking to me. I see some hands. Yeah. I see a oh, light. A I it's see a great it. picture. I see it. And the Philip, you are going to see it. I but see Anna. Oh, well, I see I'm a light. Here. Here. Oh. Because that I see a pillow. Where's Aldo? Where's Aldo? Oh, I see, I see a tip of something. Boarding it. Where's Aldo? Chico. Focus on Aldo so I can say hello. Oh, I almost saw a nose. No. Yeah. Go on again. Go on again. I saw hands. Come on, Aldo. Come on, Aldo. I've been moving the camera. So Bruce has your... What's he showing? There's a light. You're not showing anything. You're showing yourself. There's another gentleman. And the chihuahua. Oh, it's, it's not right the way we do it. I am. Aldo, this is the technology, okay? No. But sky, I see some people and, and I see myself. You see yourself in a little picture. Here you I are. I saw Anna. I see Anna. Anna. Anna, okay. do me a favor. You Turn your tablet sideways. Okay, here we go. Got Turn it. your phone sideways. Okay, got it. Yes. We got it. Okay. That looks a lot I better. I see Anna sideways. And the chihuahua. And there's you see me, right? There's you know, Anna. You see Aldo? Yeah, oh, all can... all I see the top of your head I... and your eyes. Now your nose. Good. Now your face is in. Your whole Most of your face. There we go. Most of your face. Hello, Aldo. Circles. Silent. Is saying, yeah. Hello, Aldo. Bruce is recording the call. Okay. It's okay. Thank Kathy, you. you got to start. I see Aldo. Um, okay. Um. Everybody's great. back off for a second. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Okay. Welcome to. The picture phone primitives. I don't I hardly hear in the scene like a tiny okay. thing with no a dog in the, the middle. <laughs> we'll give him a second. Although you won't miss anything when I'm speaking, trust me. <laughs> Everybody here knows that. Um, this is an incredible evening for all of us. Uh, most of the people on the screen have not seen each other or talked with each other for 43 years. That's almost half. Um, I'll explain later in the program how this came to be. But right now, we're going to have Kathy Hart from the Hood Museum of Art, who's a very close friend of Sonia Sheridan's, one of our honored legends tonight, living legend. You made it, dear. Uh, Introduce her, and then I'm going to do a, a, a little introduction Hi, and we'll go into the show. So, okay. Kathy, you're... yeah, okay, I'm going to move it for a while so you can see my I face. Can see you. You're missing Sonia for a little bit, but you get to hear me talk. Um, greetings to everyone. Uh, as uh, Bruce mentioned, I'm Kathy Hart, and I'm from the Hood Museum of Art at Dartmouth College. There is nowhere I would rather be. Uh, right now than sitting next to Sonia Landy Sheridan. We are in Hanover, New Hampshire, and we encourage all of our New Hampshire neighbors to get out and vote tomorrow. Um, as many of you know, Sonia is a remarkable human being. Her work as an artist reflects her multifaceted nature, bringing together the curio curiosity of, a, of the scientist, the creativity of the artist, and the soul of the poet. Her past work, as you may know, mainly resides in the collections of the Langlois Foundation in Montreal and the Hood Museum here in Hanover. I am representing the Hood for this evening's event. Sonia's legacy as the founder of the program Generative Systems at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago and as a pioneering art and technology artist continues to flourish. Many of her former students are on this call and we will have the opportunity to act, react, interact with her and her brother artist and friend, Aldo Tambellini. Sonia wrote to me just recently in preparation for this event. She wrote, quote, if we are to retain what is to be human when using recent technology, 
It is absolutely essential to keep an expansion of our body, such as the hand attached to living things. I see dark as essential to the beginning of birth, but light as essential to emerging life. It all has to do with how to retain the complexity of life. End quote. So with, with that, I turn things back over to you, Bruce. Uh, and we both look forward to this evening's redo of the 1977 picture phone event. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, everybody, let's take a photo of Sonia. I mean, let's hear this a little bit. Yes? Yay. Yes. Okay. So um, now we move on to the visual part of the program. If everybody, uh, we'll see, we'll see you all in about thirty-six minutes. Okay, we'll stand by. Should we just stay on? You may, yes, you may watch or you may go away, but uh, come back in thirty-six minutes. Okay, look at that. And like the All right, how'd you do that? image. Do that. People on the call. Let's turn it even more so because Skype will only show four screens at a time. Yeah. Which means everybody will be the little bubbles. I don't know if you're the person on your screen, the top, bottom. I mean, the Africa. Yeah. You ready to start the look? I'm still happy, still. Yes. Mm -hmm. Tell me what this is. I don't want us to go away. I don't know. I'm trying to see how we're doing this. I don't know. The sound is gone. Okay. Hey, Anna. I see Anna. Sonia, oh, yeah, I haven't said a lot to her or anything because she's so over with this. It is not there. Are we waiting? Can we chat with each other? Each other. I don't know. No, I think they're recording up something. I can say words that I can get at all. Yeah, they can. They can talk. Well, can I talk at a moment, sir, please? Nobody answered. But it's because they're showing something, Aldo. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, you can. You can hear her, right? So, um, um, Bruce is um, doing something visually at the event, and we're standing mm -hmm. by, is what mm -hmm. I understand. But can you? Um, is is <laughs> Aldo? He wants to please say hello. Please mute your mic, please. Thank you. Excuse me. So they're showing the film now okay. at the audience. So they don't want anybody talking because they're audience in the film. I'm not sure if the others are aware of our possibility. I don't know. Where are you, friend? Worse than to travel like. Thank 
I know the can you chat with us? Yes, of course I can chat. But I don't I don't see Sonia that clearly. Anna, you should pay attention to this side too, because you're not going to get anything, and I'm not going to get anything clear. This is going to chat to them. Yes, I do. Every so often, they flash something, right? Like. I could chat, but. I don't know who I'm chatting to. Uh-huh. I know what the idea is all about. I'm not pretty set up with the idea. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's a, there's a no, don't make me do something that I know not to do right now. I'm just explaining it to yeah, you. I know, but there's another time to learn uh, to it's just true. what we know and do it, not to learn something. I know. That's not for you. You want to hear what they're writing? Of course, I would like to hear. Okay. So, I mean, <laughs> it's supposed to be between me and Sonia, and I don't see it happening. <laughs> Why? I mean, you are going to be between you and whatever it is, it's scripted, okay? What I mean? Whatever it is, it's scripted. It's scripted. I'm not scripted. I'm improvising the training. For the next 30 odd minutes, Bruce is screening a video for the audience, so you can't talk because your voice will go into the audience. I won't talk, but I have to know what happens on it. He's. he's He's showing the video from when you and Sonia did the How project. come I don't see the video? Because it's set up. He's with an audience. He's with an audience and he's showing the video. You can't show the video to all these people using different programs. No, I'll talk 
I see the same thing in the screen here, and an audience see something else on a larger screen or something. Well, the whole well thing that's is, what I was going to do. I was going to no, play Anna, it. You won't be able to get anything, and I won't be able to hear. I need you here, Anna. You won't get anything now. It I should have been done before. You the pip I was going to play you the picture phone. You know what? They're going to come out of here in and yeah. out of for okay. the next 30 minutes. Yeah. Bruce is screening a video to the audience. Less pictorial, less really a matter of copying, less. Um... Hey, uh, Anna, can you hear me? Yes. Would you mind muting your mic, please? Because it, it, I don't have any other way of controlling it here. And, and the, we're having like a competition for the oh, film. Sorry about that. I'm sorry that you're hearing this conversation. No, no, no. It's good to hear. And it's, it, yes. it fits the event. <laughs> but, no, it fits the event, but, but we still have a little bit of business to run through. So um, oh, let me muting take. will be great. Okay. I, I have to go. Okay. Just remind me, okay? Yeah, we'll jump up and down. It, it'll be about 12, 20, 30, 30 minutes from now. Great, thank you. We're off uh, matching situation with situation. Then uh, search for abstract form, for the language of forms. Uh, to give uh, the visual form, the uh, non-visual involving appearance is, is, a, is a considerable artistic feat. This These kids were beginning to uh, uh, understand that, uh, following auditory instructions for visual situations. But the translation from one medium into another awakened their sensory life in a completely new way. I was quite surprised. Well, we've had here a close gallery at Andover for a number of years, a program whereby all students are expected to have an experience of what we used to call art, but we are tending now to call visual uh, perception. The idea being that so many people, so many citizens, are uh, virtually illiterate as far as the eye is concerned, although they may be quite proficient, quite erudite in matters of communication by the accepted academic means. So from the standpoint of education, we feel it's extremely important to train the perceptiveness through the eye of every citizen. Uh, specifically, uh, this is done not only in terms of drawing or work with uh, three dimensions, but also we find that the camera and the photographic medium apart from the camera is of considerable use because it um, provides a very quick way in which uh, a student can observe and through observing discover relationships which are not so easily come by in terms of drawing alone. I don't want to take up much time introducing this film. It's quite short, but even so the time is more useful when we yeah. see it. The point is, however, that you've been working with photographs downstairs and have discovered that the photograph is not quite the same as working with a true camera. It's a different kind of reality. In the same way, what you're about to see by Norman McLaren, you can relate, if you wish, to the work that you've been doing in the studio drawing, or the work that you've been doing down in the dark room with photography, especially with regard to the photographs that you've been working with, being as distinguished from the reality of the true camera. Let's look at the film and we can talk about it later. accepted as merely environmental and taken for granted. Today we have, uh, because these things
have stepped up in many of their developments, in many of their manifestations. We have to understand the language and grammars of many media. And uh, this, it, it, it is a rather, a rather fantastic, isn't it, when you think of the number of hours that people spend in front of film or television, or to know nothing about the processes of making these, these things, or, or nothing about the means that available for themselves to express themselves. So the grammars of medium has become, uh, have, uh, this, this area has become a, a new area of stress and education. Chinese, Japanese art forms. Uh, this um, is a tremendous discovery for the children, obviously, in the, in the potential of a form right in their own hands. I like seeing oneself in print, I like uh, writing poems and seeing them published. So <coughs> the thrill that uh, the OK More children get in seeing themselves learning to read and write by actually publishing themselves as they go uh, by typing. But uh, the McLaren world makes a tremendous break with ordinary film in this way that by painting directly onto the film, you make the audience, as it were, the screen, instead of making the audience the camera eye. And so the child then, by drawing directly on the film, has a sense of mastery over the whole, whole world. It's like a, a composer uh, writing a melody. He makes a world. The composer making a melody doesn't try to make a world that corresponds to some other world. He just etches or makes with sound a world. McLaren, when he draws directly on the film, makes a world. He, he isn't photographing a situation which corresponds to some other situation. So this switch from matching to making is a drastic one in the learning, in terms of the learning process. It, it, it switches altogether again from classified data, from mere uh, matching knowledge to a world of actual discovery and actual knowing of forms. I, I think that you couldn't find a, a larger uh, a switchover in the whole history of education. I think that um, in developing new techniques for developing visual literacy, that is a sense of form and texture uh, a sense of the concreteness of things experienced in a sensitive way is one of the most essential parts of anyone's education for which present very little has been done except at a few experimental centers. Hello? Hello? A film which can present familiar objects in entirely new ways can, by showing material in a perspective that we do not ordinarily see it, it helps free us from the provincialism of whatever perspective has, has become habitual with us. 
it isn't only a matter of being presented with uh, interesting perceptual effects, but it's also a matter of putting the learner in the position of creating new effects himself. And the special importance of photography is not only having professional photographers and artists working together to present new sensory experiences, but to have the learner use photographic equipment and to keep a running record, as it were, of his own attempts to shape and form material in interesting, exciting new ways. The film uh, of the Art Center is uh, well, we, uh, made uh, one is in animation. I'm going to talk about what we have today. I'm going to put in my... Uh, right here. And uh, this is like a monstrously complex. As it comes to those two. This one here? Both of them. Once the uh, elements of this design are understood, what it permits really is the animation of uh, two-dimensional and three-dimensional objects. And we hope that in a way... It was an end to my ear, Ronald. Coordinate the activities of the center by making it possible for people working I have to, to keep my hands on it to uh, put their objects into uh, motion. The other part is not an orthodox film school curriculum. It's a attempt really to introduce people to the idea of film as a way of seeing things around them. And uh, what we do is to work in eight millimeter in the uh, initial course. And they're given specific assignments each week. They're given a different kind of an assignment, which is meant to introduce them to one facet of the power of film. Let's say slow motion or I can hear better, but um... one of the uh, things that uh, I want to show you is the work done by a student who is continuing his experiment from last term in a special project in the animation of clay. This is with a simple camera. I, I, I hear pieces, but I don't know. It's a very unclear. Now I can't hear you. To give them an opening on their environment. This, this thing should have been all tried before. Possibility of it being uh, television executives or even television directors is probably not as good as of them becoming poets or bankers when they leave Harvard, actually. But I think that once having taken these kinds of courses where they are given a chance to, to see in a new way, then they will be more, at least, visual bankers than they were before. If they went for the bank building, maybe it's going to be a, a good-looking bank building instead of a, a bad-looking one. Presumably, people tend to know least about the things they're most uh, imposed upon uh, by. Uh, the, uh, there seems to be a mechanism of uh, protective inhibition, so that people automatically seal off the areas where the experience is maximal. They seem to know least about the areas that they are most involved in experientially. That is why perhaps this uh, world of the um, uh, garment center is so uh, exciting to a uh, highly literate and highly uh, retinally and visually oriented population. It's giving them back their other senses through the uh, through the, a certain use of the visual sense. Yeah, through a very tactual and uh, low resolution use of the visual, they suddenly people, uh, get people involved with their other senses in this world, and they begin to sense uh, what is called plastic form again. Uh, the, of course, it is a kind of primitivism. It is like a rediscovery of primitive values of the unsophisticated, the unprepared environment, the non-technological world. This kind of thing tends to go along with a great deal of sentimental uh, uh, over valuation, perhaps, and a, a great deal of uh, romanticizing of the primitive. Uh, this uh, goes along with the kind of glorification of the primitive world of childhood, and so on, which is a natural reaction against a highly mechanized environment. Anna? Totally silent, so. This will be where Sonia and Aldo's art is, is, is given some credit here. And I don't push it too much, it's going to come off my ear. <laughs> feeding his face, feeding his face, that is, into a copy machine, turning out a portrait only a mother can love. 
Art is everywhere. You just have to know how to look for it. At the new school of the Chicago Art Institute that was formally dedicated today, there is something called the Generative Systems Department. The school will be open to the public this weekend, including this department, which looks like a cross between an office and an art studio. Various types of copying machines are used to create works of art. The works have a surreal technicality about them. Copying machines usually are identified with standardization, but here they turn out one-of-a-kind objects, which then can be reproduced with hundreds of variations. It is strange to say the least. Artist and instructor Sonia Sheridan showed me some applications of generative art and fabrics. A simple child's visual toy that produces abstract Anna, shapes. Anna, Anna, don't pull it. This is going to come out. A little different than the previous one. And the copies are transferred to gold lame fabric, giving it a shimmering fluid quality. Other fabrics were adorned with copies of people's faces, repeated over and over again. Huh. You become the art. Just put your face on a copying machine and press the button. Well, I'm not going to be trying to work a part of my space is going to be put on the machine here and the image and color, right? Or is it just what's my After you get the finished copy with all its ethereal color variations, you can transfer it to fabric, in this case a t-shirt, or you can just mount it and hang it on the wall. Not only do you have me coming, but you can go and do. This is all about us becoming a work of art at the School of the Art Institute for Channel 2 News. It's with a silence on my side, Anna. It's going to be silent. Pardon me? They'll let us know when we have to turn it on. They'll let us know. Well, so far. Aldo has here but with someone mess with me, please, after the program is over. Bruce is screen a video to the audience, okay? So far, I have not participated at all, Anna. You participated with your presence. Pardon me? You participated with your presence. No, I, I supposed to say something, Anna. Pardon me? It's a silence.
Ja, wo wahrscheinlich alle mehr Süffel ist, oder? Ist das schon der... Anna, ist das schon der Putzer vor, ne? Could you say this side, please? Don't, don't hit my... supposed to be participating. Well, would you do me a favor? Ask but I like that. That I would like to say something. I don't know what you're saying. We can't talk. Because what you say here is showing yes. on the screen. Okay, then how... When they finish, remember, they said right now he's showing. Yeah, yeah, but explain to me since I'm supposed to be the one participating on it. Okay? No, you participating. I'm supposed to be participating. And I want them to understand. Then I cannot understand what they're saying. Listen to me, Ghana, please. And send it to him as a thing that I would like to know when I can participate, okay? Because otherwise, I'm going to sit over there, I don't understand what goes on, I know what she's doing, I remember the thing, but why am I here? Are you supposed to be the one, or am I supposed to one? I have said a word. I haven't said a word. That's not the idea. You understand that I didn't plan this. You understand that, right? I know, but then it should have made it clear, Anna. I should have made what clear? I mean, those are Polaroid and Prager shots or something. That's you talking now. That's me, okay. Exploration would be sufficient. Why we must ask whether this system is right and appropriate, whether it's going to happen, will happen, or won't happen, seems to me rather irrelevant. They discover and discover it. And discover it. They just dare to talk about it. They just dare to think about it and think about it. They just dare to unfold and unfold it. Please. 
I can only be myself, and I'm sorry. I know, but yourself is really Yourself is a group of people who don't know you because hundreds of people who don't know you. I'm going to talk about today, I know what I believe on it. You should have done that. You should have been awake and talking about it when we were trying. What do you mean I should have been awake? I'm very awake now. <laughs> what are you criticizing me for being awake? I am awake, Donna. I don't want people to hear us. No, but that's not the thing. That's the video. T minus 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9. We have ignition sequence start. The engines are on. 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. We have Auseinandersetzung mit Multimedia begann mit dem Fund einiger Dias. Instinktiv bespülte er sie mit schwarzer Farbe, zerkratzte und durchbohrte sie mit Nadeln. Als er sie auf eine Häuserfront projizierte, stellte er Ähnlichkeiten zu seinen Gemälden fest. Daraufhin begann er Glasdias zu bemalen und nannte diese Numagramme. Tabellini sah in diesem Vorgang eine Erweiterung der Malerei.
Do we have any of those resources? We do have a lot of it. Tambellini begann am MIT eine einzigartige Untersuchung der Videosphäre. Er erarbeitete künstlerische Ausdrucksformen und entwickelte neue Formen der Kommunikation. Zum Beispiel arbeitete er an einer frühen Form des Bildtelefons mit. So the first time I did the, the uh, performance was at, at Columbia University, and it was called Black. It was uh, two poets and one dancer, and myself the project. I made Black several times, and each time it was a change into it. It was like a work in progress. Then little by little uh, became Black uh, Zero. Eventually, we came out in public media. Uh, the last time I had a television to work, which it was not in the beginning, really, obviously. A million tribal elements show black dead, and you will be caught eating your meat in the black Mariah of ozone. When I write poetry, it's very, it's very political because that's the life that we all have in on earth. But when I do paint, I think I'm like in space, and where there are also all around forms. And that was in New York. We had a, a movie theater where we show uh, seven days a week experimental film. We used to call it underground. They had a platform that were painted black, and I called that a black game. We had the show by Nanjun Pike and John Marla. We had a show there by Kusama, which done became very well known. Uh, we used to project on the wall around it, and the people sat on the floor like we did last night. So they were kind of surrounded by things themselves. You know, the words you want, you wanted the audience to be, to be part of it as much as you can, even if it was a city was played. I never had an audience as big as this one last night. Last night, it must be like 400 people on this. I said, a lot of this should have happened a long, long time ago. No, it needs to be. <laughs> Okay, thank you all for getting through that. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, we can boot up if anybody can hear me here. Is, uh, is that all happening? Uh, let's okay. vis uh, verbally say something so we'll hear, hear you. Um, go ahead. Hello. Good. Get take yeah. enough room for you to You're see. You're on now. Hear you? That's not me. Steven? I can yes. see silence too. Okay, good, good, good. So, uh, Kathy, do you want to introduce this next part so we can move into the uh, script, please? Um, you mean the, introduce the, uh, the script itself about yeah. Aldo? Okay. Yes. Um, okay, so Aldo and uh, Sonia have been speaking back and forth over a period of time in preparation for this event. And uh, what we have here is a recreation of some of that communication. Is there anything you'd like to add before we start, Bruce? Uh, I just need to get the pictures up. <laughs> okay. Okay, you do that. Um, you do that. So um, uh, this is sort of, uh, this is a type of conversation which is going to be recreated. Um, Bruce is going to read some things and then Sonia and Aldo as well. Uh, of their e mostly email communication. Can everyone see the screen share that's going on? I'm not sure what I'm sending out at this point. Can you see that what I'm diddling around with right now? Um, we can't, I, you know, I can't, um, uh, Bruce. Uh, before I could see it when it was just uh, the three of us, but now I'm not seeing it. Okay, so let me, this, this is... Uh, not coming up right, but let me let me see if I can get the screen share happening. You just you just sent up a screenshot of our former a former conversation. Yeah. Okay. So let me see if we can I get this. Really right. Right. That should help us. Is that better? Can you see the screen now? 
Put this in. Uh, yeah, I see. I see your computer screen with a lot of lists of things. Is that, so oh yeah, now I see that. Okay, so uh, if you want to uh, get them started um, on the script. This okay, a, you actually, you, you are the first person who reads, Bruce. So oh, okay. well, <laughs> you want me to read your okay. section? I need some light. Put this in my okay. Room. I have to put it here because they're talking. Everybody's talking. I don't hear anything. Um, Bruce, do you want me to read your section? Uh, one You're second. You're the first one on. Right, but uh, Anna, are you ready to? No, now I have the speaker off. Can you hear me? No, yes, you have, can, you, we can you hear have you. the speaker on. We can hear you. Wait a minute. Do you hear us? Your speaker is on, Anna. I can hear you. Okay. Anna, we right, can hear now, you. Now I'm all smart. Okay. okay. Okay, so now so we're... So I'm the first, game. right? You oh, are first. This doesn't count, does it? Me being first? How does this work out? <laughs> uh, fearless leader. Okay, here we go. Beautiful. Uh, Wait, Bruce, can you give me a chance, please? Because yep. I'm maneuvering around the room here. I'm sure. very quiet. Just a second, Bruce. Okay. And there's Sonia. I see that beautiful hand. Yeah. Aldo and Sonia. Is Aldo right now? Aldo, you're on, finally. Okay, Aldo's on. There he is. Okay, Aldo's ready. Okay, the, so the, the, the image you're looking at is uh, uh, an image made. Excuse me, may I just explain something to Aldo? If you sure. have earbuds, then I can't hear what's going on and I can't help you. Okay, so listen to what they're saying, okay? Okay, all right. Okay, so you want us to read the emails that we wrote? And then well, also would like would like to ask uh, would like to have a chance to ask Sonia something. As part of the script, there are two spots for that to happen. Okay, so I'll give it to. You. I'll tell so you. before we start, one more technical question: Should yeah. I just put up the PDF that has the script so you can read it as along off screen? No, I've got it right here. Right, I have the script. But you can't hear is what you're telling me. Is that correct? No, now I can hear you. Okay, so here we go. The image you're looking at was made and transmitted via facsimile during the 1977 Chicago Picture Phone event. It shows Aldo's hand and Sonia's hand overlapping in time at 2.42 p.m. Um, and Bruce, you were going to read the date for each one, right? And then Sonia would go. Believe it or not, I can't find the script. <laughs> okay. We will Wait. say, I will do that then. September 19th, 2019. Yes. Sonia's Sonia wrote. Gareth Wendy Thornton, Sonia's caregiver at Kendall. I now know that the 2020 Aldo and Sonia being professionally broadcast globally will be about broadcasting what it is to be human. Aldo definitely is a perfect example of the most creative male. Yes, male, capital M-A-L-E. Sonia in her brown books with pen and brush is a fine example of what it is to be a creative female, capital F-E, capital M, capital A, capital L, capital E. Both Aldo and Sonia have left large visual and poetry records of their life experience in foundations, museums, on the internet, and in other generations. That means in all of our lifetime, we are in balance in the middle, yet stretching from negative to positive. Love, Sonia. Uh, wonderful. Number, number eight. Sonia. And there's that picture. And Bruce now reads. No, no it's, it's actually it's your turn, turn again, Sonia. Through. Number eight. So, yeah. Okay. Only now I have to get three hours sleep for this night. You may begin to understand the physical dimensions. The mind alone is keeping me alive and happy. I wish I did not have to sleep. It's such a waste of time. Nighttime is my time, and I'm told that I must sleep, but I have no time for that. 17 hugs. That's a university experiment with the number of hugs necessary to etch the medicinal aspect of hug into the brain, Sonia. Very good, Sonia. Thank you. Number nine, Sonia again. Dear Aldo, I forgot to tell you that for a conversation, I would probably miss most of what you say. My hearing is very bad. I would need large lettered signs or make fools of us. 
Also, nurses keep randomly coming in and out of my room. That cannot be altered. I then miss them. Not a good idea. Uh, for they treat me in important ways. Love, Sonia. Wonderful. Aldo. And all those eyes. Number 10, Aldo, November 16th. I can't read without the glasses. Uh, just a moment. I have to get his glasses. <laughs> okay. It's there in, right here. Just one moment. Okay. Aldo will be right up. As you all can see, it took a great deal of juggling to make all this happen. So please be patient. Er. And this is literally the first time after months of doing this that I've heard Aldo speak. Okay, here. So it's an accomplishment right there. Sonia, you're doing great. Okay. Thank you. Okay, there's a November 16. Yes. I say hello, Sonia. I can understand because I have a problem right now. I write on the hospital as I have been here for a week, and I don't know how much longer. Maybe we can figure out to write a series of conversational of poetry and publish from two friends, collaborators, artists, and innovators. Maybe we will collaborate on a major project somewhere in space when we meet again in the wide expanse of the cosmos. Now, I, I, would like, I would like to say something because I've been here without saying a word and the whole idea was to have a communication with Sonia. So I would like to say to Sonia, first of all, that uh, in, in the picture phone event, uh, Sarah Dickinson, uh, who is a mime, she went outside of the space that she was in during the picture phone, and she started to do mime, since she used to do mime herself, and somebody was taking her in different parts of Chicago where, where she was doing mime, and she came, came in, in one of the spaces and showed the video of her doing what she was doing outside, the very same time that was going on inside with the picture phone. Now, I would like to say to Sonia, when she said the question, what is it I'm, like I'm right it? here, Aldo. Pardon me? I'm here. Yeah, because at that time she said, what is it like to be human? And that is a question which is even more difficult today to, to answer, because today the, the technology uh, has grown up much more complicated and much more difficult. For instance, discussing from the time we did the future phone to today, I would say that the increase of robots themselves, which are becoming more and more like humans. You'll need to unlock. Promise? And oh. Yes, it has become complicated. We'll, we'll, uh, yes, Aldo. The, the robots are going to become taking over a lot of the job of the working class today. And they, yes. they expect to the extent that also in MIT, they had artificial intelligence and, and they will be able to give artificial intelligence to robots. As a matter of fact, uh, recently they've been able to create a human brain, which is unbelievable thing, a small human brain, which is a real brain. And, and uh, we will have probably an increase of humanizing the robot who have... Well, I'm sorry, Anna, would you mind to move the, your block in the whole visual there? Okay, thank you. Um, and and the, 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 the time that we're living together, I think uh, to answer the same question that Sonia asked, which is a correct question, what is like to be human. Well, they will also have in the next war, the World War Three, which is inevitable because the whole history of mankind is based on war. And if you have another war, there will be 
robots actually which are in the making now or maybe already existing because the government is financing a lot of this uh, uh, new new technology for the future by giving uh, a lot of money to certain institutions with MIT similar to MIT in other words you know so the and human beings are going to become more and more like machines. In other words, in other words, we're going to have a machine between the robot is becoming more human, and humans are becoming more like machines. In other words, that's uh, so. It, the question is going to be is, is a very important question. What is like to be human? Uh, <laughs> I have no answer to that because. I also gonna. I also we're gonna have people going in space, like they're planning to go and live in Mars, which is a different hard kind of a place to live in, because everything is not livable for people going to Mars, and uh, we still don't know why we as human beings exist from the time of, of the of the universe. So. My interest has grown more and more in my interest how we, the rest of people, are relating not to the earth, but how do we relate to the universe. I've been reading books about the universe for which I didn't understand before, and now I understand much more. So it's a, it's a complicated world that's coming up for us. And then I want to say that. To say, I think you've changed quite a bit. Aldo, I'm, I'm listening to you very carefully, yeah. and I believe that it's essential to keep what it is to be human, the entire spectrum from the worst to the best for ongoing life, because there's something very special about this particular animal. And we can, too, and many of the young people are showing other ways of finding to deal with education, to find with the, the whole money business. And I'm getting that from a lot of the young people. So I see the future as positive unless we explode the whole planet, unless, you know, it has to go part of us to another space. I think of myself as being one proton going into space, and along with me are a whole lot of protons who happen to be around at the time because they're all these friends. And, and I'm hoping that you and I are protons side by side going through space. But I may, hear may, everything may you I say. May yes, I, what? May I interject for a moment, Sonia? Uh, there's yes. several other people listening intensely, but I noticed their microphones are all off. Philip? and Greg and Carlos, if you want to turn your microphones on, you can join the conversation. And same with you, Ed, if you'd like to speak up for Stephen and Marilyn and Ken, please do. Ah, I, need your help. I don't know what was going on there. Um, is my just... mic on, Bruce, is my mic on? Uh, everyone's mic is now on except for Carlos. Okay. Who is Carlos? Isn't there a sequence? There's a sequence, right? Well, right at the moment, that's broken down, which is okay if we want to continue, or we could jump back to the script. Yeah. I see Aldo. I see myself. I see Kovanen. I see Aldo down below on the far right, and someone in the middle on the bottom whom I don't know. Is that Aldo's friend? Stephen. That's Stephen. Zonia, hi. This is Steve Oshowitz. Hey. Hi, Steve. Steven. Yeah. Steven. I'm so honored to be here. Um, I have something I want to read at some point. Uh, it's going to take uh, three minutes. I don't want to hog any time, but I, I feel it's important, at least for me to express. And I don't know when the appropriate time to do that is, Bruce, or if, I, if there's enough time for me to do that. It will be in a little bit once we get into the two screen piece where we'll okay, have the great. breaks. Okay, great. I'd, like, I'd like to pick it up with Sonia reading number 15. Oh, okay. 15, not 12? Okay. No, we're going to jump ahead, okay? Okay, let's jump ahead. We're doing we that right ahead. now. Um, 
And it's very good what you said, Aldo. That was incredible. Thank you very much. Yes, it was. It's beautiful, Aldo. Yes, it was. I agree. Yes, it was. Okay. It says, Aldo, can you complete this poem? Human beings, row on row, waiting to know who will click their on switch. At each switch of flow, we soon will know who lives below. Very nice. Aldo, number uh, 17, or 16. Number 16, Aldo. Just one moment, please. I'm getting it for him. Number 16, December yes. 1st. Yeah. Just a minute. Thank you, Ed. <laughs> Is that the laser show? Okay. <laughs> okay, here we are. For Anna, if you want to read it, and then so no, and then I, I'll get the poem. Okay. Here, but don't put it in front of the, the, the paper because I don't like that. Okay. I don't air. Thank you. December first. He says, Sonia, the poem you wrote seems to be completed in itself. I tried to think how I could finish finish it, and came up with one of the poems that starts. In below that you mentioned, and also talks about things we learn in destruction. Maybe warning us about the defensive and how machines could be programmed to destruction. Of course, one goes hand with one role for to detect the and yet our fairness. For the ultimate destruction. Well, just let me know what you think. No, I don't know. The point. Thank you, Waldo. Here is his poem. Does he want that? Here's May I poem. read your poem? Yeah, no, I agree with it. Or would you like to read it? No, 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 please. You have to show yourself. We kill okay. for the peace. We kill for the peace dividend. We kill, destroy, and rebuild. For job insecurity, we kill evil tyrants that define redemption. We kill for human for human spiritual liberation. We kill, we kill, we kill, we kill the human soil, reprogramming a better one in the machine. That's the my point. Is an answer because the whole history of with the rest of people because. I, 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 I belong to the planetary society, and uh, I believe we are Earth people uh, connected to the universe. We're just a small little, little, little ball to stand in space. And I follow what the what the scientists are talking about the future, and uh, I believe that the scientists that are observing the the universe are more aware of the future, in other words, uh, than we are. And uh, it is the humankind to conquer, to dominate, and to, 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 to take over the territory, make colony or slavery of the native people. In other words, uh, there never, there never be peace in the future. Sonia, uh, Sonia is 95, I am 90 years old, so, we come from an entire different generation. I grew up in Italy under Mussolini and under World War II, and I was bound by the airplane, and I came just like an inch to being killed myself. So, and then I was under the, 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 the Nazi invader that reduced Italia into, into almost a slave society. So I'm totally aware what the next, the next war will do with the technology that we have today because I've been reading about what the scientists are telling us. And Sonia is absolutely correct. We eventually will destroy our environment. Look at all the fires the fire that yes. are happening in forests. We are losing forests that are necessary for us and we are polluting the air. We are, we are destroying the ocean. In other words, Little, little by little, we are destroying the environment. I'm with you. 
I'm with you all the way. I agree. I agree completely. Do you want to say a word about right. what you're seeing on screen? Human capacity for destruction. The pictures of you. Do you want to say something about the pictures on screen? Who oh, should say you. something? Either of you. Okay. Oh, yeah. the, there's Aldo on the left. And then in the middle is Sonia with a younger sister leaning on her and a brother smirking. And it says Sonia 1928 and Aldo 19, 1933. 33, yeah. Very close in age. You were both three. What no. was that? You're both three years old. You're I, both three years, you're both three, three years old. We're both three years old, that's right. Is that old? Old? Should be. Doesn't look like it. This doesn't look like this one looks like old. old. Num number 18, Sonia. Yes. Hold on just a second. We're, we're, going there. we're jumping ahead. Yeah. We're, we're getting there. <clears throat> okay, dear Aldo, I'm forever grateful that we met. My first question is, what brought us together? With appreciation and affection, Sonia. What brought us together, Aldo? Dear Aldo, here is another page of Sonia poetry that is about the constant struggle between power versus charm, Sonia. And then Sonia, there's a picture for it. Sonia, let Aldo answer how you came together. Yes. Come together. Okay, um, how we got together. Well, there was a, a, a MIT. Of the sense of events of your study, where I was, that Adopina had a some kind of special day. Uh, I think it was called Arts Transition, and I think Adopina and Sonia too was invited, and that's what I met. And I think we must talk about some similarity that we had, because she later on invited me to Chicago. I think she invited me twice, and I think. Yeah. Well, we definitely have things in common, definitely. I'd like to hear from Aldo, Aldo, do you remember how I liked I liked Otto Pina's talk so much? I tried to go, am I crossing over myself? I tried to get on the stage and I hadn't met you yet. So I was trying to slide up on the stage when I slid down and fell on top of you. And that's when I met you, <laughs> falling on top. <laughs> I don't remember that. <laughs> that. That's what happened. That's how we met. You brought Otto Pina here. You're the one who brought him, but I didn't know that at the time. I liked Pina's talk. It was so excellent. That's why I was trying to crawl up onto the stage to thank him <laughs> when I slid right down and right on top of you. And that Whoa. was our meeting. And that was our meeting. <laughs> I did don't... somebody come to help you, or did I go just hold on to Six you? I, I don't somebody... remember that. <laughs> did somebody help come to help you, Sonia? Did, did somebody come to help you? Oh, to you? help me get up? Yeah. No, I think we just became friends from that moment on. <laughs> we just got up and began talking, and that's how we I met me. And you were interested in everything. You were always curious, and I was curious, and together we were curiouser and curiouser. Curious and okay, 21, please. Sonia. 21. Dear Aldo, here is another page of Sonia poetry that is about the constant struggle between power versus charm. Now, I know that that is a picture because I put all my poems together with pictures. But here the picture shows power is the darker circle, and below it are, is a circle. It's just switched over now. I can't see it, but I remember it. We're just many bits, many, there it is, many bits of lines and things. And of course, there is a female out in the circle, in the square, and all the mathematical things. But I really was always concerned with both the power and the charm so that it was sweetness and light, and yet it wasn't all power. Sure. Aldo, number 23. Here, Aldo. Yeah. There's two circles. Okay. Uh, December 23rd. Uh, Sonia. Well, you know. Okay, uh, number 24. I made a lot of them. 
but this double circle determines not a struggle but harmony. In my circle, the circle and has a sound which I, I actually hear. When I form them, they keep on resonating till they have reached a perfect balance. Then they drop, then they drop, and so do I. My largest one was called the echo. Two circular, each painted on an eight by eight canvas and out of, of parts of the black. Love to you, Sonia. Aldo. Uh, I see I the picture with the circles. I have to say that today, I will say yeah. that everything which is in the universe has circular kind of form. You don't see straight line in planets and other things that are in the universe. So the circle represents actually our relationship to the cosmos, which is increasingly in my mind, you know, that kind of relationship. We are terrestrial people, and there are all the civilizations in, in our galaxy, and, and uh, same, similar to our, called the Milky Way. They probably have all the names. So no Milky Way we galaxy. Know, we, don't, we don't know what is existing in the universe, which is we probably one day will communicate it. And one day uh, there is a, a, a particular person that wants to, I think he's from Japan, he wants to take artists to, to, uh, to, to outside of the earth, uh, in order, in order uh, what do you call it, special uh, places. I have a collection of, of statements by Kazlonad, from, from Russia and from uh, astronauts from the United States that space itself is black. And so there are many reasons why I've used black. Thank you, Waldo. Number 24. Waldo, <clears throat> thank you, Waldo, for asking the same questions. Mine often result in what I call the inner landscape, my after midnight images when asking my hand to tell me what it knows. They are my form of poetry. Meanwhile, Kathy Hart of the Dartmouth Hood Museum of Art plans to work with me here at Kendall. She's with me right now for this Aldo Sonia conversation. I've been very fortunate in knowing her, her through the years, a very lucky person. Kathy's presence has energized me considerably and calmed me down. Number 25, Sonia. Uh, there's a picture. Okay, Aldo, thank you. Anna and Aldo for this wonderful, appropriate image of a younger Aldo who may be wondering what next. A younger Sonia is also pictured in a 1976 VQC. And okay. there's Sonia. Uh, no, here, where is this? this is the that picture on the left of me shows me moving through time. And what it shows is the copier is a time machine. It not only takes your picture as a camera does, but it's in between a video camera and a still camera because it shows the shadow of me following me, which is quite interesting. Number 26. Different machines show different things. Number okay, Aldo, for all those two circles, Sonia. And here are some two circles that I sent you from a drawing. I don't know if it's on the screen there now, but I am yes, looking at it. Is. Oh, there it is. That's right there, the circle within a circle. And of course, it has very, very fundamental infinity signs and, and certain signs that are very fundamental. In some cases, I used to put up kind of a little dictionary for what the actual signs mean. And uh, they were always part of notebooks just kind of investigation into how systems work, how systems work. Number 27, Sonia. Dear Aldo, here are two circles going in two directions. We're going in two and directions. And of course, it's this, in this one, you can see uh, one series of circles is taking the natural, what we're used to, motion, and the other circle is going in the opposite direction. And they're the beginning of life, the beginning of growth. And of course, the lips are very important. They're also a leaf and, and also are the boats. And they have a lot to do with the Chinese experience. Mm. And so, 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 mm. 34, 44 time plane. Number yes. 28, Aldo, December 29th. 
Okay. Uh, is it uh, December 29th? Dear Sonia, I guess we can match most of our work. The intent is there. Here's the, if any, I made in the early 60s when Warhol was training <laughs> little boxes. Maybe he was designing shoes. <laughs> Uh, two black circles resonating like the larger picture done in the silver du with duco paint. Yeah. Love, love my circle. They talk to each other. Can you hear the conversation? And yes, I, I, I can hear. It's all going in a circle, and I hear it. I hear the power, and I hear the very simple, also lovely, linear little tiny lines. I and elegance, power and elegance together. Power and elegance. Oh, yes. Aldo, number 20. Oh, no, this is uh, Sonia, number 29, December 29, uh, December 30th. Okay. Aldo Tambellini and Sonia in the summer of 1977 at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago. Aldo 2020 dreaming of Sonia and Aldo in the summer of 1977. We are the primitives of a new era, 1961. Sonia, that's Aldo talking, though. Sonia picked your collage, Aldo dreaming in 2020, and another one. And here I, this was very recent. I made a picture of you sleeping. It like looks such, such a good picture. So I sent you another one today. This one that I'm looking at now has a picture of you and me, but the one I sent you today has your own poem in it. Okay, well, this is great. Aldo, do you want to say something about your primitives? Yeah, I want to explain it. That uh, when we went uh, to the moon for the first time, which it wasn't very far from from the Earth, uh, we we became the primitive of a new era in the sense that was the first time that we people from the Earth were going out into space into another place, which it wasn't that far from us. But today, we are privileged even more so of an era coming up, which is uh, technologically more destructive and, and more, more technologically destructive and uh, more puzzle for the future of, of our life. I mean, I don't mean our life as Sonia and I. We're talking about the the the, the the future of the Earth itself. I mean, I see the Earth like a small planetary part of it that one day the scientists are telling that millions of years from now that the sun will become a flat, dark circle that, that uh, will totally die and, and the life on Earth will die too. But that's predicted to be uh, many millions of centuries from now. But I think the Earth is going to end up before that. Wow. We, go, we go from what we think is primitive to what is sophisticated, and then we go back again to what we think is primitive, and we find out we knew when we were primitive, we knew more than we know now. So it's constantly a rotating system, and therefore you will have a continual motion from some kind of knowledge that's powerful to less and less and to more knowledge. And we add reading and writing, and then we find out that we've lived, we've missed speaking person to person. So in each case, you always have kind of recycling of the whole process of becoming what humans are becoming and remaining no robots, not our artificial intelligence, but ourselves as humans going ahead and moving into the future as yeah. a species. Being primitives, we all need to take a break. We've been going at this 90 minutes, so we're right on schedule. But everybody here needs to stretch. And I know you two and four and six probably do the same. So five minutes, we'll resume. You can leave your Skype on, but I'd turn your sound off. <laughs> See you soon. Hi. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. We finally had a conversation. <laughs> You'll always get interesting stuff from Aldo.
We love talking to you, Sonia. <laughs> <laughs> That's a short version. That's very nice. What is it? Can you hear me? Who? What? Yeah, go ahead. Are you talking to us? Yeah, I was talking to Ed. He was showing something, and I was wondering what it was. I was, uh, I was looking at the feedback loop uh, that I could create between my uh, my devices. Is it between your devices, or is it also was? Fa I don't even know. Is Facebook still running? <laughs> Does anybody have that up? No, it was my iPad and uh, the laptop. Yes, they will feed back to one another. Yes, exactly. In the in the audio, if you, as long as you turn the audio off on one of them, we're okay. Mine, it'll... mine don't. Your doesn't feedback. No. And that's what I I don't know where I turn off the sound. But well, I you know, to... it's a Bruce, mute point. May I, may I ask you something, Bruce? Yeah, sure. Everybody. Yeah, well, well, you're going to get the comic relief from this, the conversations in this place. Uh, is Carlos Casas online? Well, it appears to be, but his sound is off. So um, I'm not sure if he's listening or not. Um, I'll punch his button again. Maybe it'll somehow uh, prompt him. Do you know that we know him very well? Uh, yes, I do know that in the background of oh. everything. Yeah. You, I'm going to explain it to Aldo. Carlos Casas, remember when we were in Paris at the Pompidou? Yes. They made the... He says they, he's unavailable. They made the... Um, the DVD. The DVD yeah. with the... Yeah, and Carlos was the one that did it with oh. the other guy. It says he's online, but he's not coming through, so I don't, I don't know what that's about. All right. Is, is John he, is he on the United States? Or I don't know. John's not there. I'm I'm looking at the the thing right now, and it's he's he's off. So Mr. Maybe, yeah. Right. Mr. Maybe decided not to be a part. I guess. Oh, okay. Or maybe he took a break. No, he was never on tonight at all. Or maybe he was uh, since you had the schedule of when we would uh, be participating. Maybe. maybe. Waiting I, for I, did get, I did point. get an email this afternoon, so let's see what happens. And Chris, Will, is Willard on? Willard is in California, and I didn't know how to include him at this late date. Oh, John's online. There's John right now, I think. There's John. One is in California. One is, you know, they're all I think all he's over. in California. Yes, he's in John. San Francisco. Is that John? Hello, John. It looked to me like Willard was watching on the Facebook. He had a group there. Yeah, he was. Let me check my email. He was trying to somehow at the last, you know, like five minutes to you seven. Know, the, Willard, the one with the music. Never sent that. Okay. Was, so, watching that. I like how um, Sonia sitting in front of your TV and the antenna behind you. It looks like you have antennas. Or a crown coming out of your head. <laughs> it looks great. <laughs> when, you, when you sit back, it looks like you have antennas coming out of your head or a well, crown. She, she does. <laughs> it looks marvelous. <laughs> it looks great. So, 
Oh, oh you want to comment on it? Your microphone's on. You want to talk uh, about those, your antenna? Those are part of the a large computer the screen. Someone and said they're Astros. used to, to, for music, very fine music, and also for film. My Somebody other heard. computer is at the other end of the oh, room. It's small and it rotates next to my power chair. Oh, here you it's hey, it's, Tappy, it's Tappy, Sonya's off. router. What? Someone, someone says Can you CC. Turn? I Guys, yeah, have my phone down a little bit, please. Please have okay. a Posner invitation. Hey, Bruce. Bruce, I'm getting communication from Carlos via chat, and he's asking for you to include him in the call. Good, thank you. I'm, I, I've punched the button several times. I'll try well, now it again. he's there. Thank you for that. He is? It looks like. No, now he's present, so can you punch it again? I don't, I'm surprised. Okay, let me try adding there. We'll do it. I'm surprised any of this is working. He says he's, okay. it seems that he's not able to connect. On Hello? He just okay, did. Carlos just yeah. joined. His image is Hello? Carlos. Yes, Hello, Carlos. 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 Do you Carlos. hear me? Hello, Uzbekistan. Yes, turn your. Um, uh, uh, can you Hello. hear us? Carlos, can you hear us? Carlos. Hello. Do you hear me? Yes. Oh. Yes. He obviously doesn't hear us. Can you see, Carlos? Can the, you see? The, is the connection? Hello. Yes, it's very good. Um, let me try emailing him. Uh, Where are back. you, Carlos? I don't see Carlos I, at all. I, I cannot hear. Yes, I know you can't hear. That's what we're. Uh... Bruce, I seem to be able to chat with Carlos. Let me try. Okay, good. Is he, and I is the audience on? We can hear Rick him, also? but we can't. He can't hear us, and he's typing back now. Let me see if my microphone is. No, my microphone. You hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Let's try this for a uh, second. I hear Let's see if that helps. Keep chatting. I, I see him now too. Carlos, you're there. Do you hear us or not? I see you and I hear you. Is the is the audience on a break also, or is the audience back? They're getting ready. We're getting ready to turn the light off as soon as we get the Carlos thing resolved. Okay. Carlos, speak up, please. Well, I, I, I cannot hear or see any of you. Oh, but that looks good. Look at that. Nice it's, light. It's great to, to imagine. Can you let Ed, can you let him know that we do see him on screen and we hear him? Uh, Bruce, I'm the one who's chatting with him. I'll, I'll do that. Okay. Thank you, Philip. Actually, he was chatting with all of us, Philip. Oh, I'm chatting with whomever wants to watch. <laughs> <laughs> Take the lead. Okay, so Carlos, if you uh, find, I cannot read, what is this? The, 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 the Gmail server, okay, so I think that's a bandwidth issue is all I can come up with. Are we ready to rumble? Yes. Yes, the next part. Hi. I think I'm getting. I'm ready to start. You ready? Seem to start? not to be able to see or hear anything. He doesn't see anything. He uh, says maybe it's a bandwidth issue. Yeah, but that's odd that we're seeing him and hearing him. Um, yeah. you up there? Maybe Bruce, there's. This out, only the circles are in. Yeah, you're now on my. I can I can Hi. read your message, but I cannot hear anything. Isn't now that bizarre? You. Carlos, do you want to I can hear you. And, and Philip, maybe, maybe. I've used that information before because so much is going on yeah. and so much is sort of kind of personal in a way, you know. Philip, should, Ed, should we hang up? And I know it right now. Have no, Carlos, can hang up and call him again. They maybe can it'll, hear you. it'll come together. I don't think they can hear you. I got to get this back on. Bruce, yes, would you ready. like me to do something in the meantime? Yeah. Or someone um, to do something in the meantime? Two screen tape now. Yes, there's okay, a slash. I, yes. yeah, I just told Carlos I, to hang up and we'll call. try it. Again. And <coughs> he said, okay. Okay. I just turned so, the mic on. Do we call so Bruce, don't, you have to invite him with the microphone? I'm confused. That means it's off. Right now, there's no slash. See that mic right there? There's no yeah. slash. There's, there right. I see. I see Sonia. This is, Sonia, yeah, that looks marvelous. It looks like you have double antennas. Speaking to me. Okay, Carlos, are you back? I'm and here? to get it. Might be a nurse. 
they might okay. be looking okay. what Okay, now it's, I, 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 I hear you, but I, 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 Underneath, I think no, that no, behind you, right, right through the hole, it's video, in there. It was, okay. again. That's it, that's it, quick. If you hear us, that's it's good enough. the nurse. <laughs> okay, I think that. that it's, it's either the image of the sound. So before I was seeing only uh, what, what, pictures okay. of you and drawings sure. of you. Maybe it wasn't a nurse. I don't usually get a There's robot. A lot, there are a lot of politicians calling. Is that it? Yeah. Oh, OK. OK, here we go. Because I rarely okay, get those. Where we go? Here we go. Okay. Back before on. we start, may I just show you Aldo's, sure. um, Aldo's new book? Yes, please. With his poetry, nice. and it's broken up into uh, sections of his early years and <laughs> his, um, his political views. I know someone said he's never changed. So <laughs> political views. And then um, lots of personal uh, poetry. And uh, Sarah, the, who was in the picture phone, died, Aldo's wife. And he has dedicated a section to her. So I don't know if you can see it. Are you able to see it? Yes. 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 Kimberly, it's... listen. Listen, right. Okay. Very nice. Available. I on think the... that's what he was just writing recently. Yeah. yeah. He told me. And the introduction is by Ishmael Reed, which makes uh, one of the early performers from the Umbra group who worked with Aldo in New York. Oh, great. Okay, so here we go. We're going to rumble because it's getting late. Yeah, they want uh, it. Kathy, can you turn um, the microphone down a little bit for Sonia? Okay, okay. It's a little loud to <laughs> Okay, will do. Thank you. They're on a limited time now because they lose the. So everybody that's here, uh, except the audience, is probably familiar, is familiar with the 1977 picture phone event because we were all there. Um, in some respects, it was this incredible experience, which has brought us all back together again. And in other respects, at the time, it was like this bizarre train wreck, mainly because we didn't really know the technology, uh, being that we entered the room kind of naked. So what we're going to do tonight is replay the tape from end to end. But to make it work for everyone, being the audience and yourselves, we're going to stop every couple of minutes. And on the uh, program notes, the script that I sent you all, it has the timings, which I'll try to keep to. And at those moments when I stop the tape, then uh, the person designated, which will start in an alphabetical order backwards with Stephen on our bottom left corner, can speak for several minutes. Uh, but I will cut you off in three minutes. And I'll okay. cut you off by starting the tape again. <laughs> So let's go at it and see where we get. And if we He's need to stop to and have a discussion as a group, so let's hot. do it. Okay. And he's going to stop at every certain point. Yeah. And the person that's listed can have three minutes to say something. Okay. So Stevens first, then Sonia, then uh, Philip, then Marilyn, then John. If he John's not here, well, we'll see what happens. And then um, Ed, and then finish with Aldo. <laughs> Okay. When it's your turn, I'll be there. So here. I'm you're telling me. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. If we can manipulate our microphones, that'd be great. And if not, that's great too. No, um, I hear them quite clearly, but sometimes I don't. So one of the things I wanted to do before we started was there's the people that aren't here tonight, and uh, that were there then, and I think we owe them that that honor. And uh, here's a nice series of pictures in the workshop at the Generative System Studio of Holly uh, Pedalowski. I hope I'm saying her name correctly. And I wanted to show everybody's work because I think that's important that the art part of it. So this was a piece by by um, uh, um, uh, I'm spacing out her name already. <laughs> Holly Pedalowski. Thank you. Thank you very much. Also, thank you, thank uh, <laughs> Gerda Meyer Bernstein, is that correct? Am I saying yeah. it correctly? This is one of her works from, I think it's 1976, or all these are from the Yoni book of 1976. I believe she's still with us living, uh, but she's a year older than Sonia. She and, died. Oh, she died. Okay. Okay. Well, Someone God bless her soul. Sick. Um, her daughter puts it up. That's fast. Here's a picture from Will Thornton. Um, 
He's who didn't want being in the call. He, he, he asked him if we were communicating, but he didn't want to do it, which is understandable. Uh, that's him in the middle. In the, in the uh, video we showed earlier of the uh, copying machine, the, uh, the Bob Wallace tape, when Bob lifts his face off the machine and Sonia's showing him the copy, you see Will get, walk in with that odd gait that he had. He walks in the door and walks up and, you know, around the room. It, it was nice to see that. And then there's Kathy Conton. I can't say her name. Cotton? Correctly? Somebody correct me, please. Whoa. And uh, she is around, too. But she declined to be in the call, too. So I think we covered everybody. Oh, oh, and then there's Ron Cohn. A very nice image of Ron's. Um, and the nurse is Ron now. Cohn was a lawyer for Trump. Oh, jeez. Oh, <laughs> And then really? from the room at the time. And you notice the pictures are all the students on the wall. I think in the middle there's Philip um, and yeah. Kathy amongst They're those people. talking about the students who aren't here, yeah. who aren't on the wall. I it's came to crazy. generative systems not knowing anything, which I think all of us didn't know. But I was making Xerox mural in the mid-70s before entering. Are you getting feedback from you? And this is how the whole thing started, seeing Aldo's video at ZKM and one shot we saw in the little preview. So here we all are uh, leading up to the workshop and it's on your program notes here. Uh, now this is what the picture phone people advertised and uh, this is what they got. <laughs> There's Holly with the camera in the room. But they have I don't think it quite worked out the way that they envisioned. But we had Aldo and Sonia. Each individual came up with a unique way of making their presence known. I think that's a Davy, uh, a Davy drawing that was going on, a portrait of Sonia. Aldo thinking, that's Davy doing the drawings on the left. We couldn't find him. And there's Kathy and John. And at some point, we started touching the screen, which you'll see soon. Doing this, yeah, yeah, and, and I, I'm just keeping one this. Thing, one thing before we get into this is you. that I, I wanted to try to make uh, help you with he's the trying, audience. He, he's just, he's just talking. Uh, so let me find a picture here. But then he's going to give us three minutes. So yeah, I'm going to. This room was really, it's really fragmented in the video to the extent where you can't really understand what's going on. What we're looking at here is a really rough drawing that I made sort of from memory and watching the tapes. TA1 was the room on the left, and TA2 is the room on the, TA2 is the room on the right. The circles are generally the people. But what was confusing, and the table, and TA1 is a square, and the circle in the other one, and there was a back row in TA2 also. What was odd was the, uh, 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 the uh, placement of the equipment in the room, which really none of us, like I said, knew beforehand. But if you looked at the wall, which I don't know if you see my cursor moving around in TA2, it had two monitors on the wall. But if I got this right, and somebody can correct me, the desk, there was a control panel in the desk that had this set of four images. Is that correct, Philip? Or am I off? Right. So what it did was this, is if you're at the TV sets, there was actually only two in the, in the wall. Bruce, I don't see anything that you're showing to the audience. Yeah, you're you're showing showing something, huh? Oh, oh, you know why? The screen sharing is off. Thank you, Phil. Um, I still don't see anything. Yeah, I know the screen sharing was off. Sorry about that. It should be back on now. No. Yeah. Everybody's going off yeah. now. Now you now do. Everybody's off. Yes, yes. So I see it, but it's I don't see any circle. people from the conference call. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> you see the picture of the room. Your sketch is relatively oh, close is. to what happened. Yeah. So the point I'm going to make, I'm, all I'm trying to make here is orientate you a little bit because the two the two TVs in each wall had the cameras mounted next to them, and the arrows are pointing the direction that the cameras pointed in fixed positions. So there was a straight on shot, a shot to the left side of the table, a shot to the right. Then each room had another camera on the right side of the room on a tripod, which I'm circling right now. So my little stick figure, and Holly was on this camera, 
and Will was on this camera. And then everybody moved around or whatever. And then somewhere in the room, there was a station for sending pictures and receiving pictures in real time. So they were uh, facsimile type images. And that's another thing going on. And then there's two blackboards uh, oh, okay. on the right side <laughs> here <laughs> and here. I only show this to you because it'll, it won't make any sense while watching the video. And so with that note, uh, I think that covers everything. That's it. Okay, so let's, uh, let's go at it. And we're going to do about five minutes here. Well, if I can find it. All right. Okay, here we go. Okay, so they're showing it. Well, they're showing. Are they still going on? <laughs> <laughs> Not working. <laughs> the streaming is huh? streaming mm -hmm. is bad. Now I'll just make this. The exhibition. We put the two side by side. So that's where I was, and that's where she was. So you see what's going on. When you put on the other room. Yeah, you know. <laughs> oh boy, who's the phone? Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, I use no words. You feel like saying anything. Can you say, you know? He was a control master. Thank you. That was my answer. I'd like to tell you. I have to admit that, that everybody's audio speaking is drowning out the tape totally. We, we, it's very hard to hear the tape. Um, so I'm not sure how we should do this because we, we can't. Uh, with the microphones on, we can't hear the video. Well, we could turn ours off. That would be a good uh, start. <laughs> and I will Especially stop Anna and Aldo. Yeah, it's just, it's just, uh, it's really hard to hear okay, the Okay, mine turned off. Thank you. Let me see, how do I turn it off? I... Does that work? Yes. It, it, he says, when a man's word goes, and with the power of perception goes, so that point is controlled in a sense. It is physical as literally is a standard. To see and to give commands to the whole world is not to see, is not the same as being everywhere. And in a way, you know, it. What is happening to us right now is like being everywhere. But the whole world actually can be conscious of it the moment. Not only the people in this room, not only the people in the back, but I would say that our whole world has all the world outside of ours. But we want to be able to see the church, the world, the church, the world.
Okay, Stephen, you're up. Um, okay, hold on here. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, you want to tell everybody who you are again so we all can hear yeah, you? Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to uh, read what I wrote. I'm going to send it to you, Bruce. Okay. Uh, and you can, you know... So, um, uh, Sonia and Aldo, uh, this is Steve Oshowitz. Um, I was a student in the class, and this is an amazing and phenomenal activity that we can all be together and have this beautiful uh, memory that we bring forward into the future for uh, future generations. Um, Sonia 
Aldo, your work is amazing. It's inventive. Um, it's extremely innovative. Um, and it's, it's such an honor to, to be with you now and share this so many years later. And I just want to, and, and your inspiration and, and uh, your sense of um, innovative time and space will, will go into the future. And I want to acknowledge that Sonia and Aldo's work is exemplifying, in my view, the concept and activity of being great experimentalists, where you pulverize the separation of art and science and you bring them into a human phenomena with its own identity. And um, I see you on the same track as the wheel, electromagnetism, the steam engine. I see what you do is science as well as art and technology. In my view, you are contributing to science as well as art and, and technology. So your contribution um, is, is large uh, for the future. And I'm just very honored to have been part of it uh, in some way. Uh, and, and thank you, thank you so much. All right, that's really nice. <laughs> Did they get that? Do you think they got that? I think they did. Uh, we're, 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 you you, you uh, have anything else you'd like to say to them? I see Anna smiling, so she must have heard it. Uh, no, Sonia, no, are you they good? Just, they yeah. both need to know uh, that they hmm? both need to know that their Mike's work on. is even Mike more out. important Mike is on. than than oh, it's already Mike's important, out, but it's even more important as time goes on, and and they they need to uh, be aware of that and be, uh, be certain about that. As time goes on, their work will even become more important. Well, thank you very much, Stephen. Yeah, yeah that's it. Okay, Stephen, we're, we're... are you able to hear me? Are you, yeah. This is yeah. Anna, are you able to hear me? Yeah. Oh, I, I just wanna say that I know that Aldo's kind of very, very tired right now but I want to say how precious those words are and and he will reflect on them, I think, when he has a little bit more energy. But it is so critical at this point of his life being so ill and, and having all these ideas and, and this uh, yearning inside of him to be able to reach out and tell people what he believes in that he's affected a lot of younger students who rally around him just to to give him energy and to have him go, keep, keep moving forward. So I know that when he has a chance to listen to your words and he can hear them, he'll also feel them because that's his goal at this point of his life, to say, what is my life been all about? Thank you. I'm Thank honored you to be so a part much. of this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. We're going to go back to the movie. So microphones off, please. You keep on giving me these hard jobs. I know, I know. Don't <laughs>
They're still showing. Is there any up here? They're still showing the, uh, the program. Do the table. Uh, would you please put a uh, uh, sequence the way they went out? Yeah, yeah. Why not? Why Okay, uh, we're ready for Sonia. You have your two to three minutes. Okay, okay Sonia, you're on. All right. What I'm thinking now is all the people at the Art Institute of Chicago, and I'm talking primarily about the students who were so fascinated and so interested in everything, and that really made life there possible. Because right now, the man who was the director very often in the last years, his name is Roger Gilmore. Believe it or not, he lives just downstairs at the entrance to where my building is. His name is Roger Gilmore, and he became the director. And so he has a lion from the Art Institute and some of the drawings from all the students of that time. So life is kind of a mystery that way. But the students meant everything with me. And if you read much or go on Google and read about me, you'll find time and again what it says is that Sonia always had the students with her. I was taught by my own father that you stand on the shoulders of others. And therefore, since I was standing on the shoulders of others, they could then stand on my shoulders. In other words, and we, we could reach for the stars or whatever it was. So students became very important, and everywhere I was, there they were. I still have one student here, and unfortunately he has a cold, or he'd be here in this room right now with me, and his name is Greg Gundlach. His father was Robert Gundlach, the man who made Xerox possible. And unfortunately, he's dead now. But his son, Greg, was brought to me when Greg was in the middle of his graduate school work and not too happy. And the father said, I think you'll be happy in generative systems. And when Greg showed up, there several things happened. And I would say this must be in 1978, perhaps. And what happened was that he met the other son who became a doctor from the 3M scientist, Douglas Dibvig. So people always being brought together. 
Now, Greg lives near, very near me, which again is very strange. But Greg Gunlock in my class, once his father brought him out of the one school into the general systems class at the Art Institute of Chicago, Greg got five patents <laughs> immediately for 3D photography. And so Greg has a cold right now. And so he can't be in here with me. Otherwise, he would be right here at this particular time. Do you have and, any reflections on picture phone? Pardon? Do you have any, do you have any reflections on picture phone you want to talk about? A picture phone. Now, what in the devil was a picture phone? Remind me again. <laughs> the event that we just had the video out oh, yes. when you were both in the same room. Thank you, okay. Kathy. That was a long time before Greg. And the picture phone, it was really quite a long time ago for me. I remember that I was able to get a hold of a Bell Telephone Company, and they said you could have these two rooms. And Aldo was coming for the summer. Actually, Aldo happened to come quite a while later, and therefore I ended up running the class for a while, and so we ended up with two rooms, one for me and one for Aldo, and certain students went with Aldo and other graduate students went with me. And as a result, we had the two rooms and we could communicate for a very short period of time, but it was very interesting to see in one room the girls changing clothing all the time. I never could figure that out. I wish they'd tell me why they were always putting out these clothing on themselves. And with my group, they were very quiet and very polite. And I think they didn't put any lights on me because I'm very dark in the entire thing. I don't think they were tech oriented. I think they were the very kind of very sensitive kind of artist types, you know, it's very different. So that's ex what happened at that time though, turned out to be an historic process that would end up now being the center of a conversation because what happens it's the beginning of something that would become something in everyone's pocket but no one knows is i often design clothing for the future and one of the things i designed if i knew that i were, was going to talk about it now i would have brought a picture of that and what it was was an outfit all white in which there were pockets for various kinds of equipment we would carry and one was a tiny little pocket right near the ear Turns out it would be the cell phone in the future. Yeah. So always anticipating what might happen. That was very interesting. And I think that what happened is in the beginning at the Art Institute, uh, there were a certain number of how-to courses. And that really wasn't what I was interested in. And so I lost a lot of students when they didn't get the how-to, but in came an entire new body of students. And I lucked out because they were all the thinking artists, the thinking artists. And once the thinking artists came in, that's how people like Greg Gunlock and other people from their science, to science fathers uh, would come in. And therefore, I can't tell you what I did, what the students did. All I know is we always, we always were together. There was a kind of leadership there, of course, because you have the job, you have the position, you can do certain things. But fundamentally, there are all these interesting people. So I loved about teaching is you're learning. You're learning from the people you're with. And I had a lot to learn about what makes certain kinds of artists. It's very, very important to find that out. So I found out that though I didn't plan to be a teacher, in fact, I don't know if anybody knows here, but at one time, I was a social investigator for the city of New York. Sonia, I have to because interrupt. Because I we had have to, to move onward. Bruce, Bruce is asking. Yeah, Bruce? Yep. Yeah. We, we need to move onward, unfortunately. So I, I hate to interrupt, but uh, can we pick this up a little bit later in the, in the uh, uh, discussion between folks? Anytime. Yeah. 